So we have a, a great couple on here today, and I had the pleasure of interviewing them just a little bit after you got married. What did we decide? It was like two weeks after you got yes, married. Yes, I believe yes, so. And, and they are today. now uh, <laughs> old married people. They <laughs> yes. have now been married 11 months, and it's David Hughes and Katie Marie Hughes. So thank you for being with us today. Thank, thank you so you much for having us. Well, there's all kinds of exciting things going on in your lives, so um, we might want to recap a little bit for the viewers. They may not have seen us uh, 11 months ago, and we were talking <laughs> about the uh, miraculous connection of you two. So why don't, why don't you share that? I also told him, I said, that just dis these displays of public affection, <laughs> they just, they're even holding hands now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, um, well, thank you, Tracy. Uh, but yeah, we'll do a quick recap, because I know either folks um, maybe didn't get to see that leading into some new great things we want to share that God's really continuing to impress on our heart mm -hmm. just to encourage folks with and testify to. Mm -hmm. But really, in a nutshell, I have to give the extreme nutshell version, but you know, just over a year ago, actually, because it was May 18th, the first time we ever talked of last year uh -huh. on the phone. And it was one of those things where, you know, thankfully I grew up in a strong praying family right. where, you know, they encouraged me, don't settle, you know, just right. wait for God's best, <laughs> trust Him, you know, just wait. And I got to a point at age 33 where I was literally thinking, God, you know, if Abraham gave in, you know, he, he was promised the child, but if he gave in and went right. <laughs> trying to help God out and, you know, with the servant girl there and, and created Ishmael and all that, I was like, Lord, what hope is there for me <laughs> to, to wait? But but I can tell you today, I'm so thankful that I did. And, and those watching today, I know you're waiting on something. There's a promise from God that you have a desire in your heart that you know is in alignment with his will. Mm -hmm. And it, it is, time is the tester. Absolutely. You know, it is the tester yeah. of our faith. You know, if God gave us a word today and it just showed up like a drive through window tomorrow or today, mm -hmm. you know, our, our faith wouldn't be tested. Right. So what a growing time and testing of my faith that was. And I can literally tell you and, and everyone sitting before you today that I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that she is God's hand-picked best fit for me. Amen. Um, to help us come together and, and maximize the callings that God has for our lives. So, yeah, we spoke for the first time on the phone for ministry purposes on May 18th. Right. We had never met, never talked in person. I knew on the fifth night on the phone, beyond a shadow of a doubt, because of divine confirmations that were just undeniable, irrefutable, right. um, divine, that we could right. not have tried to justify in our own mind or try to twist scripture to say, oh, this, I feel these great feelings, it must be God, yeah. you know, because we tend to do that as humans if sure. we're not careful. But literally because of his clear confirmations, the fifth night on the phone before I'd ever met her, um, I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt she was the one. Right. Um, so we decided the fifth night on the phone, proposed within 40 minutes of meeting her for the first time, <laughs> married 19 days later, That's so and um, here we are today. So, um, so you believe Katie Marie is God's best for you? I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, you know, and, and so I talk a lot to people about, you know, we can believe this or that, and we can be talked out of beliefs or opinions, sure. but we can't be talked out of experiences. Yeah. You know, in our personal relationship with the Lord, right. you know, that, that has been an experience, an encounter Amen. with Him. Amen. Just like you all were sharing with, with JP there mm -hmm. about how, you know, all these gods and beliefs, there's a difference in a belief, an opinion, and a theology, right. and an experience. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So those encounters with Christ Jesus in an intimate, personal fashion, we can't be talked out of. Right. Um, yeah. And so that's the same here. Because of the way God did it, right. with all of his fingerprints and supernatural divine orchestration of it, it's beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's beyond a belief, it's a right. knowing. Amen. Um, and so that brings a total peace and joy and excitement and passion, knowing that we're in the midst of God's will. And I want to let her share, she's got so much on her heart, but as we transition a little bit here, I want to share a verse that the Lord put on my heart as we were backstage this morning just praying. And really, I know this is going to be of encouragement to someone today right. watching, and, and it's been just such a a great confirmation here in Isaiah 48, chapter 17. Now, this is in the NIV version, and it says, and this lets us know how personal God wants to be with each of us. Right. Not just our Creator and, and right. Savior way up here, but personally, right. intricately, and intimately right. involved in the details of our daily life. Yeah. And that's what we experience on a daily basis just because we seek Him to that degree and above anything else. And He wants to reveal Himself to us right. in these ways. And He tells us right there in Isaiah 48, 
verse 17. In one verse, he says you, and he's talking to each of us as his right. children, he says you five times. Uh -huh. So to me, he's trying to get across, I'm your personal father. He says, this is what the Lord says. This is what Isaiah says in Isaiah 48, verse 17. This is what the Lord says. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. And this is what God says to each of us as his children. I am the Lord, your God, mm -hmm. who teaches you what is best, not only good, but what is best right. mm -hmm. for you, who directs you in the way you should go. Amen. Whether it's your spouse you're waiting on, whether it's a career direction, whether sure. it's with your children, your family, your finance, whatever it is, God knows that best way. Not just what is good, but if we're willing to wait and obey right. Him and truly surrender and commit to Him right. and walk by faith and not by sight or not by our emotions, He has his best for us in every area of our life, and his best is so far out of this world, it gives him so much glory. Mm -hmm. When right. people look at our lives, we can be those billboards that are neon bright, and people saying, what in the world right. is that? And it's like, we tell them, it's Jesus. Yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Hey, you know, um, Katie Marie, he believes that you're God's best, but now I gotta <laughs> ask the, the really <laughs> awkward question. Do you believe David was, was your best? And oh God's best. A hundred percent. I mean, if, if there could be a higher percentage than a hundred percent, I mean, like a million percent. <laughs> Absolutely. In every single way, he's everything that I ever asked for, everything uh -huh. I ever imagined, everything I ever dreamed of right. is David. And he is that and so much more. And mm -hmm. I can just tell you, you know, I waited all of my life for a love like this. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I knew that it existed. I knew that there was one man that was handcrafted for me. Mm -hmm. And I also knew that I had never met him yet. Right. <laughs> and nobody hey, that I man. knew had ever met him yet because I knew he was going to be extraordinary in every way. And I just couldn't wait for the day that we would meet. But I also knew that the only reason that we hadn't met and that we weren't in each other's lives was because God wasn't done handcrafting us sure. for each other. He had us on our own journeys, but I knew that our paths were gonna intersect in the perfect time. And so right. I was completely full of peace and just utter joy because I have this deep love affair with Jesus, the mm -hmm. lover of my soul. And so, you know, everywhere I would go, people would say, well, don't you want to get married? You know, and I said, well, yeah, you know, if God has this man out there for me, then I do want that, but I don't want it until God wants it for right. me. Amen. And I think that is such a key thing that we need to understand. These yes. things that we're waiting for in our lives, mm -hmm. we do not want them until God wants right. it for us because he knows the perfect timing sure. and he has those perfect timings in mind. So. Amen. Well, yeah. your answer kept from shipwrecking our, our interview. So <laughs> yeah. I'm glad. I don't know where we would go from there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you were saying all that about David, I thought that's exactly the way my wife, Darlene, feels about me. Amen. So, exactly. She's not here I to confirm she that. But <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it is funny because we do have such a wonderful relationship. And I've told people before, I said, if if our relationship isn't a 10, I, I don't know what one is then. So, uh, <laughs> and that's the, so rare. Oh, you know, and so but rare it's, to find. it's the way it should be. Amen. But, um, but again, she was, uh, she wasn't old, but she was older when she got married. And, and uh, I was 23, so, uh, which is funny because 23 is like super young to me now. But back then, yeah. it's like, ooh, 23 is old. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I think sometimes we do try to, I think we get infatuated with our little vision of, of what we think things yes. will be like. Like, I love to ride motorcycles, and I probably put 100,000 miles on a motorcycle. Uh, but I, I find you can find them all day long for sale. Uh, where people have had them for 10 years and they got a thousand miles on because yeah. the vision and dream of what they thought in their mind they wanted wasn't like it was in reality. That's but so true. when it comes to marriage, I think people get a fantasy in their mind and so they try to make it happen. Yes. And yes. like you guys didn't do. Yes. And then they let God make it happen. And then it's like, whoa, this, our dreams did come true because God did it. Yes. So. yes. Well, Tracy, what you're saying there is so huge and we can't express passionately enough and, and firmly enough to encourage everyone. We know the pain and the agony of waiting, you know, and, and you know, the, the verse, it was actually, we wrote our vows to each other right. and shared them to each other at the wedding. Didn't know what we had written right. and we had the same verse in there. That was another Isn't stamp of confirmation. Yeah. And the verse was, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Mm -hmm. So I know someone today is listening and you feel that yes. deep, sick, aching feeling, hope deferred, whatever you're hoping for. It may be a spouse. It may be 
a healing. It may be whatever it is, but he knows. And he knows that pain that you're going through and his heart's breaking for you. But, but the good news is it doesn't stop there. Hope deferred makes a heart sick, but a longing fulfilled Amen. is a tree of life. Yes. And that tree of life is him. Yeah. He Amen. is the tree of life. So Amen. because you've put him in the centerpiece of your marriage, mm -hmm. just like we have, you know, people ask us everywhere we go, this light shines through us of this love. Well, that's Christ. It's not right. us. We didn't manufacture Absolutely. this. We submitted ourselves to him and we're walking in a personal journey with him already very intimately right. and deeply above all else. Because there were many people along the way, just like for the viewers and each of us and, and the people, the voice of the world, well-intended people that tell you, oh, this person's great for mm -hmm. you. Right. Oh, you should do this. You should do that. But only God knows what's best for each one of us. Absolutely. And if you're willing, if each of us are willing to continue walking by faith and not by sight, right. not by emotions, not by what other people say, or like you said, right. not by what we think. And that's the right. danger. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, right in there where it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, not 99%, not most of it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a dangerous place. Before every man, Proverbs says, before every man lies a path we think is right. right. It's not like we try to go wrong. Right. We think it's right. It feels good, looks good, sounds right, seems right. People are even encouraging us down that way, right. even Christian mm -hmm. family. But beyond that, God wants to know, will you press into me and let go of what everybody else is saying or thinking, what you think or say about your life, and right. say, I just want to know you. I want to know and find out what you have for me. Right. Because I know that not only that's going to be way better than what I, the plans I could made, right. but it's going to be a life that creates a living testimony. Like Paul said, we are, we are living epistles, right. living letters to be read by all men. Right. As we're each here today, we're just messengers of the goodness of God from Absolutely. personal first-hand testimony. No one can talk out. They can debate religions and theologies and all that till the end of the world. Right. But what can't be debated is the reality of real life experiences that Absolutely. God gives each of his children that are truly walking with him. I think Absolutely. there should be something happening in our lives because that's, that's a great, because Paul was saying, I don't need a letter of recommendation. You are my letter of recommendation. <laughs> yes. you, when people look at your lives, they go, wow, whatever Paul's doing, teaching must work. <laughs> and uh, if we would live our lives in such a way, remember the verse that says this, we should be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks us why we have this hope within us. Amen. So yes. apparently we're supposed to be showing something beautiful that they go, you all got something. Absolutely. What is it? And be ready and not say, well, you know, I've had good parents or it's yes. probably my temperament. No, be prepared <laughs> to give an answer that Jesus is the source of all that. Mm -hmm. But one other thing, you, and I want to encourage the people who are watching today, um, these guys love Jesus and want to go after Jesus. Mm -hmm. There's too many believers. I'm not saying you're not born again, love Jesus, going to heaven, but he's kind of like ninth on your list somewhere. And, oh yeah, I'm going to go do my church thing this Sunday if I wake up feeling like it. And uh, that's far different than being a, uh, Bill Hybels coined a phrase, or at least he's the one I heard say, and it stuck with me, fully devoted follower of Christ. Yes. And I went, yeah, let's be fully devoted followers yes. of Christ. So we're not tossed to and fro by emotions. Yes. I joke about this, but there's a lot of truth to it. We all hear God on a new car a lot. Mm -hmm. When you walk in, open up a new car door and smell you, yeah. honey, I think the Lord's yeah. Yeah, telling me this so is, woo, I can sense the Holy Ghost <laughs> all over, the, you know, but, but we need to have a little more maturity in our yes. faith to sense and hear the Lord. So Amen. I appreciate your guys walk with God Thank and wanting so to much. go after God so God could give you his best. Yes. yes. And I know we only have a few short minutes here left, so I do want to let you speak a little more into that also just about how that personal romancing right. of the Lord that really is our ministry. You know, our marriage that God has given us is our ministry. Uh -huh. um, everything flows out of that is what he handcrafted and put together to encourage folks. But it's really the heartbeat that he's put in us for the body. Right. Is that everything you're saying, there, there is so much more that Christ Jesus has for each of his children to tap right. into and experience right now, right here on earth and be a branch that's bearing much fruit. Not just Amen. going through the motions of church and all that, that shallow religion of Christianity, right. but a thriving, abundant life in Christ that he came right. to pay for and give us. So just if yes. you can speak in a few minutes, sweetheart, just on that, just the power of that personal intimacy and the romancing that really is the number one thing he wants Absolutely. for each of us so that our marriages and all areas of life can, can yes. flourish and be a testimony of him. Well, it's 
thank you so much for seeing, you know, the fire that we have for Jesus and that we want to go out and make an impact, not Amen. only on this earth, but an eternal impact. Amen. Um, you know, Jesus is not an accessory to us mm -hmm. and he's become very popular in pop culture. Oh, God yeah. has become an accessory, you know, it's like, well, I can't do this without God, you know, right, but yeah. then you look at the fruit of yeah. their lives and it's nothing but death and destruction right. and just debauchery. And so we truly live live with Jesus in the forefront of our lives, in the forefront of our marriage. And all along when I was praying and waiting and preparing for David to come into my life, I looked around at the culture of marriage today and mm -hmm. I said, if this is what it is, I want nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus, where I am with you is so much richer, so much stronger than anything I could ever have in human form, that if this is all there is, sure. you know, couples lying to each other on sitcoms and it's a joke and it's funny, then I wanted absolutely nothing to do with it. And so, you know, I was willing to wait and if there was nothing on the other side, in human form of a man, then I was just as excited as if there was a human form right. of a man. So that's the most important part is, you know, seeking to make God glorified in your marriage because that's what it's all about. It's not about David and me coming together just so that we cannot be lonely anymore. Sure. I honestly was not lonely at all in my life without David, nor was he lonely without right. me. But we knew that together, you know, two sticks of dynamite could come together to create C4 right. yeah, to I mean, yeah. <laughs> truly, you know, make an impact. So, um, you know, it was back in 08, um, which was a, a wild time in David's life as well. He lost his dad in 08. God moved me out to Colorado. And I remember just praying, asking Jesus to, to truly love me as in the role of a man in my life. Right. And so I asked him to break my heart into itty bitty pieces and to remake it the way that he wanted it to be right. and to truly show me what it meant to be romanced by God right. because I had heard of that before and I wanted it so, so badly. And so I just want to encourage all of you out there, if you are longing for a romancing, if you're longing for deep intimacy, you're not going to find that in human form. Amen. It is a God-sized hole that can only be filled by the Savior of the world, the unique lover of your soul. And yeah. He's available to each and every one of us to love on us in the unique ways that He created us. Right. So Amen. I'm just so passionate to share that with people. Amen. I cannot believe we're out of time. We need another hour. <laughs> was that two minutes or 20 oh minutes? Oh <laughs> that was so fast. I, I just want to say that I, I do believe a lot of people try to come together and try to find someone to fulfill them. Right. Jesus needs to be our fulfillment. Amen. And you yes. two came as two holes together yes. and that made it really powerful. Exactly. God bless you all. Thank you for being here today. Uh, I want to encourage you to stay tuned in. If you need prayer, come get it at 1-888-731-1000. Amen.